Hey, let's get our feet under us because I'd like to think a little bit about Agbassier and orientations. So we'll do that ourselves here. Here we have our beautiful African continent and there is our massive Nigeria and as we've discussed the top third of Nigeria largely Hausa and uh, Muslim and then uh, Yoruba is predominates in the East and uh, Igbo and Igbo land predominates in the west of Nigeria. So let's head down to the area of her field work and I'll come back out slowly. Um, let's close that. Um, and Uli is the nearest regional city, and here's that Onicha Oweri expressway that we've seen. And at 5,000 feet, this area would not be so unforgiving or unfamiliar to many of us who live in semi-arid, scrubby kind of um, zones. If you were taking this expressway, you'd be climbing up to a high plateau area at 5,000 feet, which is not so different from hitting the basins of Wyoming either, except that you'd be coming from ocean. Um, and that this is the border between where the palm tree kind of more forested areas start meeting the escarpments, the more barren areas. Let's go out a little bit further now. And you don't see any major rivers in this zone either, so water is going to be a very big issue. Um, and a lot of women's work will have to do with accessing good water. Okay, so here's Oweri, the largest regional center. Let's back out just one more time. I won't spend too much time doing this, but there we go to a larger picture of Nigeria and um, her field work significantly away from the oceans and significantly inland and rural. All right, so I was reviewing our three chapters today and found myself drawing pictures of the concepts that Agbassier was describing, whether it was the interrelated circles of Igbo cosmology or the four roles that a female holds, so her daughter, sister, wife, mother roles, or the complex of elements of the ahu, the flesh part of the person. I was wondering if any of you have been reading and drawing pictures as well. So one of the elements I thought very interesting with the pictures I drew was that the role of geography was very important to a woman's social status as well as her personhood. And I think this says something important about the resilience of the indigenous concepts regarding women's life and thought. So let's try to walk through some of these geographically um, ensconced identity issues. So first, I locate religious person on the land as an orienteer who is determining the ultimate significance of their place in the world. So when I ran across multiple references to the powerful role that geography plays in Igbo culture, that made a great deal of sense to me and started to help me understand better just how powerful is the map on which women journey in Igbo culture. As daughter and sister, one is part of the Umwada, daughters of the lineage. This is the most powerful and has been the most resilient of women's organizations, according to Agbassier. That is, while modernity is impacting the role of wives' organizations, for example, the introduction of one or more Christian churches in a community begins to divide the women according to their religious affiliation rather than uniting them as wives. However, the role of the Umwata has remained strong. There is something stronger in the tie to where you were born than the tie to other wives. Quote, the association of the Umwata alone remains virtually unaffected by modern developments at least in its basic functions, 
where such a grouping reflects a geographical basis wider than the lineage or village of its members. So this is a sphere, a network across the land. It's wider than the village because um, you bring from your root in the lineage, you bring out, you carry out uh, the umwada. So it, it's bigger than the village. Um, that's from page 41. I believe this means that whether you are in the village in which Agbasir was conducting her field work, or a village much further away, you would find that the Umwata was resilient in both places, though each town would have had great variances in the successes and tragedies of the lineages of the specific villages. You guys have seen a ghost town, right? There are different places that have greater or lesser success, but the Umwata um, would still remain an active sphere of identity for the person from that town. The Umwata provides a broad geographical foundation upon which women determine the ultimate significance of their place in the world and as such this organization has demonstrated resilience. All right, so your lineage still surviving, wives not so much. Interesting statement on modernity. So economically Igbo woman is tied to the agricultural production with which she trades. So that ties her to her geography as well. So economically, she's tied geographically to the land. Her property rights are based on those trees from which she can harvest crops. So that ties her to the trees. Though they are advisors with a consultative role in community traditions, uh, in rather than decision makers, they are the watchdogs of morality. That's page 39. So this gives me the picture of the women as alertly traveling across the terrain, ready to stand up for and even fight for a community in balance. This alert movement across the terrain with the purpose or job of maintaining moral order imbues her body with a kind of keel, guiding it towards right action. In terms of their ritual or religious status, we have an emphasis on the seasonal festivals, tying women to the crossing of temporal borders that guide the year's progress. Wherever you have a seasonal festival, you mean that you're ticking, right, into the fall harvest or into the spring. So it's that movement across the seasonal calendar, and women are tied to those seasonal festivals. So also the purificatory rites of spring that Agbasir describes in which women move stark naked across the land and men are forbidden to cross their path. Those are an annual marking of the crossing of the season which is related to fertility. So engaging in such work as to supplicate a local divinity, asking for increased fertility in the community, this confers great significance on women's bodies. Whereas in Achebe's book, we might understand how Izulu's preparations for the yam feast imbued his body as the arrow of God. We can see with the aid of Agbassier's attention to women's lives, that they also carry remarkable importance on the landscape of identity. With regard to chi, the woman's chi is remembered in an annual festival in contrast to the man's chi, which is not publicly celebrated. What does it mean in a community to have an annual celebration of women's chi? What image of the cultural landscape do you get when you think of this celebration of a woman's fertility? So Cody has a 4th of July, but I can tell you there is no celebration of women's fertility and chi happening up here. We do a lot at the 4th of July, but um, celebrating women's fertility is not a theme. Um, so Agbessier notes that a new rite, the Mother's Day rite, quote, celebrated by modern educated Igbo women, 
seems to be an eclectic cultural adaptation of the traditional chilagu. That's from page 44. So, as the modern and educated Igbo women perhaps are not wanting to parade stark naked, and just why is it that education leads us away from nakedness? What a shame. Anyway, they nevertheless, these modern and educated women, weave their new roles into the enduring celebration of traditional religions. So there is still, even in the modernizing, there is still this connection to a traditional role. All right, so let's think about religious person again. Her three questions are, where do I come from? What do I do while I'm here? So where do I come from? That gives you the origin stories. What do I do while I'm here? That's your ethics and morality. And third is, what is the significance of my death for my community? So the Mwada directs that a woman's body be buried in her natal village. The significance of her death is that she returns to the place where she was born. Now that, not that she lies beha- beside her husband's body on his people's land. Agbesier notes that this is beginning to change, and with that change of where one is buried will come a change in the fundamental significance of one's place in the world. When we move into a cosmology, I want you to picture that overarching rainbow over religious person. Agbassier argues that this overarching belief system, quote, depicts clearly the true place of women in Igbo society, from page 48, end quote. And she suggests that once you see how clearly the female is represented in the cosmology, you can begin to understand women's significance, even though they live in a patrilineal kinship system. All right, that's warning me. I got a minute left. I'm tapping you. Stop. Stop. Somebody stop the evil crickets. Okay, got it. Two minutes. You might compare that feminine-based cosmology with Allah as the complement to Chukwu to Christianity, where we have a Father, Son, and Holy Spirit constituting the overarching, and then we have an Eve, but she's known for giving Adam an apple that leads to expulsion from Eden. And we have a Virgin Mary. And so there it's her virginity that is valued, not her fertility, not her erotic power, right? So uh, the Christian cosmologies produces a very different um, attribute of a feminine divine. But here we have Allah. Um, And if we look more closely to Allah, the female vital force that complements Chukwu's creative power, we see again how landed is a woman's significance, with altars to Allah abounding in the communities, and altars to Allah found in many homes. Allah plays a physically powerful and present role in religious lives. Where Chukwu is the author of the universe, Allah is the author of human existence. The moral prohibitions against incest and murder are the statutes of Allah. So she is exercising that kind of moral authority on the land. So have a look again at the third paragraph on page 52 regarding the earth does not migrate. And again, the first whole paragraph on page 53 that links earth as the foundation of the cosmos and the underworld, source of life and place of death. Now, how would you describe the significance of the umbilical cord given that is Allah's domain. Do you get a picture in mind of how that umbilical to- cord would relate a child to their umwada and to their geography? Thanks for listening.